Thank you for joining me as I share my thoughts on Borderlands. The reason why Borderlands landed on my top 10 most anticipated films of the summer at number eight was because Eli Roth, who's known for torture porn type films like Hostel and Green Inferno and Thanksgiving uh, in Cabin Fever, you know, it gets this IP for a video game, has an incredible cast with Kate, Kate Planchett, Jamie Lee Curtis, Kevin Hart, Jack Black, so it's kind of, not really, but it, it's kind of like Wes Craven, director of Nightmare on Elm Street, directs Music of the Heart with Meryl Streep, or David Lynch gets a G-rated Disney film, which is the straight story. So this is a PG-13 movie for Eli Roth with a popular video game IP with an incredible cast. So what could go wrong? Let's, let's count the ways. The screenplay, and I think like a lot of, a lot of Eli Roth movies are pretty much surface level. And this screenplay is no different. It is literally just to push the uh, uh, characters forward to tell the story and that's it. There's no depth or anything else, nor it's, it's just serviceable action. And that's the bottom line. Is there anything wrong with it? The screenplay dialogue is probably what's, the problem with it. Everything else is just serviceable action, right? A lot of the action in this film was, again, to push the characters forward. Um, and it was just shoot, 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 gun, run, gun, run, punch, punch. There's a whole action sequence that happens underneath underground. And it's the way it was shot. He kind of was very confused in what was going on, who was punching who, who was getting uh, shooting at, what were they shooting at. And, it, you know, a good action sequence has its own story. It's choreographed with a story in mind that elements are going to happen to push the characters forward and backwards and, and fail and succeed. And in this film, none of that happens at all. And then when it comes to the visual effects, this is probably Eli Roth's most visual effects heavy film ever that he's made. And unfortunately, these visual effects should never have come, come out the door. So I don't know, if you look at the credits, these are all reputable visual effects companies who know what they're doing. So I don't know if to put the blame on the VFX supervisor or they just simply ran out of time, which, does happen or they just ran out of money i don't know and then you have this cast and kate blanchett does everything possible to make it entertaining in fact she's the only thing that really carries and lifts this film out of the gutter and kevin hart is so charismatic on screen he's so much fun to watch he's exciting but in this film it's all stripped away I don't know if it's something that he chose to do or that he was directed to do, but it's not the Kevin Hart we're used to seeing. It's really not, he's not having any fun. And then Jamie Lee Curtis is completely wasted because there's nothing for her to do. <laughs> and then Jack Black's voiceover work is borderline annoying, but at the same time, because it's not in the script and he's improvising, he saves a lot of scenes. So, with all that said, this movie didn't really annoy me. <laughs> in fact, it actually made me think of the movies from the 80s and 90s that were just serviceable action films that I can finally look back and say, this was a guilty pleasure. I have a feeling that some kid or adult, even my wife going through the channels because she adores Kevin Hart, will find this film. And it'll be a perfect film to fall asleep to or have in the background or something. But it's, there's gonna be some type, there's gonna be people that connects to this film. And eventually down the road, 20 years down the road, I don't think it'll ever get cult film status, and I don't think it'll um, 
be remembered, but I think people will look back at it who enjoy it now and then 10, 20 years will go back and think about this film as maybe I would a Arnold Schwarzenegger commando or I know the 80s Flash Gordon is cult status right now, but it's still was not a good film then. It's very dated now. But no matter what, I look back at it and I love that film. You grow up in this world of filmmaking and movie critiques and things like that. And you forget there's these movies that... And I'm not even saying this is a so bad it's good type of movie either. Just enough charisma that Eli Roth has that has kept him directing all these years... And maybe Eli Roth was a little bit out of his element with this film, but he has proven himself as a director to create stories that resonate with people in some level, in some capacity, that there's enough charm in this film to resonate with somebody, a fan of the Borderlands game, a kid that just thinks it's just crazy, insane, awesome, <laughs> or somebody like my wife who's up at 11 o'clock at night trying to find something to turn their brain off and, and enjoy. And I think this film has just enough of that movie magic to do exactly that. The film reminds me of the old days of waking up on a Saturday morning and just binging on cartoons for four hours. That's what I can compare Borderlands to. So those are my thoughts. I would love to hear your thoughts on Borderlands. And uh, yeah, until next time. It's Pete. It's Pete. Why do you think it's called Piss Wash? How did it get the name? It's in my mouth.